As you obviously know from the title of this video, I'm taking a Hot Wheels 55 Chevy gasser and degassing it. I've never been a, a big fan of gassers. I don't hate them. I just, you know, they're okay. But it's not like it's something that really draws me to work on them, usually. And then a while back, I came across a frame, uh, a base, at an online source that uh, I resin printed. And it was still appealing. And I came up with the idea of doing the Beano, <laughs> no gasser which those of you who are, are familiar with uh, Beano the medicine, for lack of a better term, it degasses you. So it seemed like a great little gimmick for the build. But I wasn't really drawn to it. Uh, and then recently I was watching a YouTube video by Wampus Cat Customs. And I'm sure a lot of you follow him on Instagram and, and maybe some of you subscribe to his uh, YouTube channel as well. But I was watching a chat he had with a couple other builders. And uh, he mentioned work done by Cody Buck. And they were really impressed with it. And I thought, well, heck, you know, if Wampus Cat, who's, who does fantastic work, is impressed by this guy, let me check it out. So, you know, one thing leads to another, and I uh, found him on Instagram and then found my way to uh, www.buckbuilds.com. And I'll have that down in the comments. And I was checking out uh, his different resin parts that he makes. And there's a lot of really cool stuff, and so I'm going through it. And uh, next thing you know, there's a set to... Uh, <laughs> degas a gasser. So at the time I, I saw it, and at the time of this video, you know, it's $20. And so I went ahead and ordered it. And uh, a few days later, it arrived. And all of a sudden, the excitement to do this build was there again. It's a really wonderful set. So that's what you see me using here. Um, you end up it's basically the frame rails and it does have an engine on it. And uh, what you end up doing is you cut off the front bumper, you cut off the back bumper, you keep those from the original base or you know, the original chrome insert. And then you keep the interior cabin for lack of a better term for it. And there you see the, the front bumper and then on here, you see me cutting this, and, and at buckbuilds.com, he does have a listing where he does a video. He has a YouTube channel as well, and there's a, a short video on how he customized one using these parts, how, basically how to make the best use of these parts. Well, naturally, I can't follow that advice naturally, so I cut it, and I tried to keep the package tray on the back, because I thought, oh, I'll have room. So you saw that previous cut there. You do have to notch the front of the interior chunk to make room uh, for the bell housing to, to fit into the body there. You know, under the firewall, you're basically doing the backside here right under that to make sure it fits. And a lot of this, you know, these are custom parts. And there, there's that base that's from uh, the website. And uh, a lot of this, you're going to see a lot. <laughs> you're going to see some of the test fitting. You don't see anything close to all the test fitting that I ended up doing. There you see I kept the package tray on the back. I did clean off the firewall as well. The casting itself has some pieces to it uh, that are molded into the firewall. I just wanted to get them out of my way. I did also get it with the wheel set that you see there. Those are actually, each wheel is a is two pieces. There's the wheel and there's the tire that slides onto it, both of which are resin printed. And there you see the detail on the left of that uh, base. You know, it's, a, it's a very well detailed base and honestly it was exciting to work with. It, it's nice. This is very well done. You know, I'm coming off another video where I worked with some parts that are available online from Lee Perry, and, and those were fantastic. And 
I have to say, you know, it, it, I've been working with some really good stuff recently. <laughs> um, so there you see, I still have that package tray on the back on the interior. If I remember right, that's what it's called. You know, the back deck behind the back seats. If I remember right, that's called a package tray, but God knows what people call it now. Um, I'm thinking I'm getting away with the tires fitting. You do cut the back bumper off there too, as I mentioned from that original chrome base. And I didn't, you know, I kept those, the original chrome, you know, the, the back bumper and the front bumper because, you know, they're chrome. I want them chrome and <laughs> why well, de-chrome them only to re-chrome them. But, you know, this, this is a lot of little fiddly stuff as you're doing it. The, the bumpers do get glued in. And it is a lot of trial and error on fitting, like I said. But, you know, every time I looked at this as I was working on it, it made me smile. <laughs> you know, you can almost tell already that, that the back wheels aren't up high enough. And there is a little rubbing on the fronts at that point. There was no way in hell I was keeping that chrome interior. So I went to my buddy Super Clean, and you know, you've seen me do this before where I string things on wires. I do the same thing when I put a, the casting in the stripper in the citrus strip. You know, I throw it in a jar with the wire. With the citrus strip, what I do is I pull the casting out after it's been in for a while and just let the citrus strip drop off the casting back into the, the jar. So citrus strip lasts me a long time. And yeah, I finally came to the realization that, hey, <laughs> Cody was right when I watched his video. You do have to cut that chunk out. <laughs> I don't know. It's, you know, for somebody that loves cutting chunks off stuff as much as me, you would have thought I would have jumped on that right away. But, you know, I, I, in this kind of situation, I try and cut as little as possible and then just keep adjusting. And at this point, you know, I'm realizing that, okay, now this is the ride height that I want. Came to my senses. I do end up shaving the uh, inner, inside uh, of the front wheel area. Oh, well, here you go. This is what I'm talking about. I end up filing those down uh, you're going to see little bits of me filing stuff here, but uh, I end up filing quite a bit off those interior uh, wheel well areas there. And the casting, once it was stripped, it did need quite a bit of cleanup. It seemed like there were quite a few casting lines all over this little guy. Fortunately, this one... There were a couple areas that were a little tough to get to because of the curves on the body. But by and large, they weren't difficult. The sides of the casting were ugly as hell. I mean, I it was a rough casting. And you know, you're kind of eyeballing it at this point, trying to figure out if you got everything the way you want it. I thought it looked good, and I, you know, I love hitting it with the Scotch Bright pad, helping to smooth it all out. Uh, so at this point, I think I'm pretty good. I'm happy with how the casting's looking. Like I said, I did clean that firewall off, but after I hit it with primer, if you look, there are still some casting lines in the back that I had to clean up. Since I have a bunch of uh, 3D printed steering wheels, thanks, thanks to Grizz at Bearcat 3D Designs, I, uh, the one thing I did to the interior was, <laughs> the detail, was to add one of those 3D printed steering wheels and I got rid of that little crappy chunk that a Hot Wheels gives you. I did spray the wheels 
and tires. They're off camera right now with uh, matte black. And then I just used a Molotow pin, took some of the chrome paint out of the Molotow pin, as you could see there in that little cup at the top right. I just kind of drain off some of the, the chrome paint. And uh, it's nice having the wheels separate from the tires. It makes painting the chrome a lot easier. It requires a lot less skill on my part. And anything that requires less skill <laughs> for me is definitely a benefit. I did take, uh, you know, and at this point, you see, I've spray painted that uh, the base. That is the resin part. Uh, I spray painted that with Model Master Aluminum. And again, this is from a batch of spray paints I bought recently on Closeout from Hobby Lobby for like a buck fifty-seven a can. And so I used the heck out of them on this build. The aluminum was a really, I was really surprised by that paint because it, it, it has such a good look to it. I mean, you can't even really tell it here, but I couldn't have been happier. And, you know, for a buck 57, you know, you, <laughs> there's no way you could be happier. At the usual six something a can, maybe you could be a little happier. But... Uh, for a buck fifty-seven, yeah, thank you. I, uh, I actually went to Hobby Lobby again. I had gone there since I bought the batch at a buck fifty-seven, because what I did when I was there that time was I basically got one of every color they had, one of every can, and I left quite a bit there. And then afterwards, it was like, what the hell am I thinking? And I went back to see if I could get more, and it was all gone. And so then after I spray painted this with the aluminum, I thought, I'm going back to see if anything turned up. And sure enough, uh, one can of the gloss white uh, Model Master uh, lacquer turned up. And so I, I picked that up. And oddly enough, that was the color. Uh, the previous can that I bought is the paint I used on this casting. I did hit everything with Nuln Oil, as you can kind of see there. I spray painted that uh, interior gray, and then I uh, went over the interior with Nuln Oil, and now I'm just brush painting. Kind of trying to get rid of that funky, stripped off color, and just blacking out the bottom side of that interior chunk. Nothing fancy. Again, the, this is the two millimeter Molotow chrome pin that I find much easier to use on detail work. I detail the uh, headlights, the front markers, the, uh, the uh, back tail lights, and the door handles. Once they had dried off camera, I do go over the tail lights with Tamiya Clear Red and the front markers with Tamiya Clear Orange. Using the, this uh, Molotow Chrome to give it a little bit more reflectivity to those uh, Tamiya Clears that I used. I didn't do a whole lot of detail on the body. You know, that's about it. The fun part about Cody's uh, kit is it comes with a piece of heat shrink tubing for one of the belts. And so you just kind of uh, gingerly go along, <laughs> heat that up, snug it up, and it's a real cool effect. It, uh, I absolutely love that. It scared the hell out of me. I was afraid I was gonna melt something on the engine. <laughs> But again, you just do it really carefully, take your time, and it will snug up. And uh, through the front wheels on there, you know, put together the back wheels. And they fit nice and snug. Um, I was considering putting uh, PVA glue, just a tiny bit to hold them together, but actually they hold together fine. It's not like there's going to be a kid playing with this or anything. If they were, I probably would have put some glue in there. But uh, 
it's a nice snug fit, works great. You know, I did already paint those chrome. They were a little bit looser, obviously, before, um, before the chrome paint. But, uh, you know, here we are again with just, you have to check this thing several times. You just want to make sure you don't screw something up because it is such a custom fit. And those posts, I, did, uh, I didn't file them completely off, which I suppose I could have. I filed them, uh, flattened them out so there wasn't any bevel to them. And uh, the, the base is glued to the body itself. Printed up some decals for it. You see, you know, from the uh, <laughs> Beano gas assist medicine. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I did, if you're thinking you're seeing something deceiving, yes, that is on white decal paper on this one. And then some of the decals are done on clear decal paper because I'm cheap and I had scraps of decal paper. And, uh, like I said, I did print these myself. And so I'm cheap. I use whatever scraps I have and feed them through the laser, they worked out fine. You know, there's a limit to what you can do. Throw an old California license plate on there. I don't know why, there's something about the license plate to me that just really helps. Maybe it's just me, maybe I'm being goofy. I naturally had to hit the brand new windshield with gauzy just cuz I know the viewers need to get their gauzy fix so uh, take another shot gauzy 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 and it, you know the gauzy always makes the glass just look so incredible this glass was perfect to start off with so you know it just ends up even shinier there weren't any imperfections in it or anything like that that the gauzy needed to fill. But as usual, just wick off the excess and uh, stick it over there to dry. Then it's time to uh, give a little bit more detail to that front grill. I ended up using null oil, and uh, at this point, I kind of regret it. I probably should have just gone with black paint, with a matte black, and then just wiped it off so it would fill the slots. But <laughs> I kind of get addicted to null oil. And while it does darken the center, I don't think it, in the end result, you're going to see it. and. I still may go back and darken this up a little better. But once that dried up, you know, now it, uh, it's time to throw it all together. And as mentioned before, you know, the uh, back bumper in this case is being glued on. And I just use CA glue for all of this. Very small amounts of CA glue. The car has been clear coated at this point, again, with the uh, cheap model master. <laughs> Uh, lacquer, it's either super clear or ultra clear gloss. Some, some uh, wording like that, but it's their uh, really extremely shiny gloss. So again, you know, just the CA glue and uh, we're just getting it all put together. You do see the baking powder up there at the right. I did use a little of that on the back bumper when I attached that. And uh, see how that front grill just, it's dark, but it's, I don't know. It, <laughs> I'm probably gonna go back and darken that a little bit better. The glass just drops in as does the interior. It still fits exactly the way they originally did. 
just on a different chassis. <laughs> and if you look at that at the top of the screen, I'm just happy as heck with that thing. You know, I'd, I'd like to take a moment now to uh, thank old uh, Wampus Cat Customs for uh, mentioning Cody Buck stuff in his video. Um, and I do uh, want to recommend that you all check out Wampus Cat stuff. Check out Cody Buck stuff. And, uh, you know, he's got some really good designs. Really interesting stuff. I, I don't know that this build does it justice. I, I can see a lot of potential. I see more lowered gassers in my future, I guess is what I'm saying. Love the stance on this thing. Just absolutely love the stance. And uh, what's interesting is, you know, this thing... Uh, it's low, it's mean. <laughs> you know, you want to make sure here as you're doing it, you have it right. That's, it's one of the things that as you're doing this, and I guess, I don't know, maybe, there's probably a way to drill it, drill the casting and use screws to hold it together too. Thinking about it, looking at it there, I probably could have used washers on small screws to hold it together. Yeah, maybe I'll try that on one. Thought about painting the radiator black, didn't. I'm really happy with it the way it looks there, so uh, didn't regret not doing it. And so at this point, I'm happy. Everything fits. Everything looks the way I want it to look. Hit it with a couple little tiny dots of CA glue. Call it a wrap. And you will see here in a second after the CA glue set up and everything, I do uh, set this thing down so you can see that uh, yeah, I, I end up adjusting it again a little. You keep, <laughs> it's one of those things, once you get it where you want it, Leave it alone. Walk away. <laughs> and for whatever reason, I didn't want to use accelerant on this. I didn't want it to somehow screw up the paint. So at this point, it had set up. And I mean, I think that thing looks good. It's low and mean. And uh, it rolls. It's still a roller. So there's where we started. And coming up, you're going to see where it finished. I think it's a great look. If any of you want to uh, do that too, I can tell you. I felt it was 20 bucks well spent. And uh, you know me, I'm cheap. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, it takes a lot for me to say that putting $20 into a casting is a good deal. But it is. And I know some of you out there spend a lot more, but those of you who know me know I'm, I'm <laughs> frugal. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope you like this build. I hope you like the glamour shots coming up. And uh, catch you all on the next one. Everybody stay safe and healthy out there. Have fun with these things. I know I'm having fun with them. I hope you are too. Catch you in the next one.